From a secret sky dimension to a shulker without a box? Here are 239 super secret Minecraft things you probably didn't know. Honey blocks have a crazy feature barely anybody knows about. They're actually just a little bit smaller than a normal block, meaning you can shoot arrows between them. Thank me later, fortress builders. Dolphins are one of the smartest animals in the world, and it's no different in Minecraft. If you give a dolphin enough fish, it'll actually begin to swim to the nearest underwater chest as thank you for feeding it. Endermen are already one of the most creepy and powerful mobs in the game. They absolutely didn't need another buff to make them even stronger, but they got exactly that. Usually an enderman will just teleport out of the way of an arrow or other projectile. First, if they've got nowhere to teleport to, the arrow will just bounce off like it's nothing. Cheaters. Luckily, there is a way to make endermen completely powerless. Yeah, sort of. Sure, you can just place water at your feet, but that's old news. If you accidentally trigger an enderman by looking into its eyes, don't look away. For some reason, endermen won't move at at all as long as you hold eye contact. And what do you do from here? Uh, good question. Moving on. This villager trade is so incredibly overpowered, you won't believe it exists. If you have a villager who trades emeralds for wheat in a desert village, you've just hit the jackpot, baby! All you need to do is go around the village, collect an absurd amount of hay bales, and craft all of them into wheat. Voila! Your very own emerald machine. The only downside to trading with villagers is that you'll be running out of emeralds very fast. So if you're a bit of a cheater like me, change the difficulty of your world to hard with a slash difficulty command, and lure a zombie to a villager with the best trades. Once the villager gets zombified, trap him in an iron block, place a bed, and start stuffing him with golden apples and potions. Now you've got yourself the best deals on the planet. Although this does feel kind of wrong. What's better than food? Free food! And you can get this easily if you use a campfire to cook it, because this uses zero fuel. I know I'm being a cheapskate here, but a penny saved is a penny earned. Am I right? You can even attach a hopper to the campfire and always have food ready for you. Be honest, how many times have you died at the worst time possible and lost everything? So if you you don't want to end up like Filza, here's a trick to get infinite health and save all your goodies. First, eat an enchanted golden apple, and follow that up immediately with a plain golden apple. Wait for the absorption effect to run out, and then do this all over again. Do this correctly, and even the ender dragon can't do anything to you. A campfire smoke is kind of pathetic. It only lasts for about 10 blocks before fading away. However, if you place a hay bale beneath it, it'll use that extra fuel to create a 25 block high smoke stream. It's obviously super cute that foxes can pick up and steal your items. But did you know they can actually use them too? If you try killing a fox while it's holding a totem, it won't die and just runs away from you like the monster you are. Luckily, this feature doesn't work on dogs. <laughs> Foxes can also eat chorus fruit if given the opportunity and presumably get really confused after. You can go upstairs much faster if you've got auto jump enabled. Finally, maybe a reason to use this. Every Minecraft player's worst nightmare is having a creeper sneak oh, in or spawn in their base and having it blow up every Thing. But to make this a little less disastrous, you can waterlog your chest to make them blast resistant. I can't tell you the amount of times I've missed out on a shipwreck because of not being able to see through the damn ocean. However, this is easily fixable with a little bit of a uh, <laughs> help. Back in 1.19, if you set your camera at just the right angle on the water surface, you could see through the entire ocean and find anything on the seabed. But, 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 Marlo, isn't this technically X ray? What else did you expect, nerd? You will never believe where the sound design for gas came from. Everyone's favorite Minecraft song maker, C418, had a cat that often made disturbed noises while it slept. But during the development phase, he thought that these noises would be the perfect tracks to use for the gas. No wonder they seem so disturbing. For years, Mojang has been fixing thousands of bugs, but there is one that is detrimental to the entire game. What is it, you might ask? Cookies don't have sugar in their crafting recipe! I would actually be better off eating cement laced with TNT gunpowder than cookies without sugar. Is that even a cookie at that point? For this one, I want you to look at the sun very closely. Hey, no, not in real life. Much had some crazy ideas back in the day. From a red dragon to a sky dimension, there was one change that was so weird, no one could have guessed why it was even implemented. I'm talking about Notch's decision to make the sun round. In fact, he did exactly that for one beta pre-release. Weird decision for a game based on literal cubes. Personally, I think dogs in Minecraft need more customization. Yes, I know they are adding the wolf farmer in the next update, but... I want to dream bigger. In the Bedrock edition of Minecraft, there was a hilarious glitch that would actually let you die the entire 
dog. Ugh. Why did they need to have more dogs? Oh no! I'm gonna die in this lava! Well, actually, no. As I have an expert way to get out of this certain death situation, if you are burning in lava, quit the game and then relog. When you log back in, you will actually have three seconds of complete invincibility. But be warned, it won't get rid of the burning, so you may still burn to a crisp once you get out. Villages are a staple part of Minecraft, needed for everything from exploiting the trade market to summoning their iron protectors just for them to burn in your iron farm. However, when villages were first added, they were only meant to spawn in the plains biome. But one mistake within Minecraft's code had them spawning in the ocean and having really nice wooden paths. Mojang realized the mistake and panicked, thinking of how to deal with it. So they decided to make it a feature instead. Yeah, it's now a feature, not a mistake. There is a secret item in Minecraft that Mojang really does not want you to know about. Certain blocks in Minecraft are unattainable without the use of commands. The command blocks, barriers, and this elusive item, the debug stick. This was actually introduced as Mojang kept adding blocks to the game that were becoming buggier and buggier. Hitting a block with this stick will actually change the state of a block. And the funniest part, this mistake is meant to fix other mistakes. No, this guy's gonna steal my diamonds. Quick, quick. Wait, what's in this chest? Oh, it's scaffolding. I can use this. I just have to play scaffolding like this and then spam clicking and then I can get away. Yes, this mistake is something that Minecraft seriously needs to remove as it can be very overpowered in these manhunt situations, but it is very fun to do. Minecraft's biggest problem is that the ender dragon doesn't look like a dragon at all. So we're gonna be fixing that with ender dragon revamped. This texture pack transforms him from a harmless lizard to an actual terrifying dragon. Combine this with these enhanced boss bars and your pants are gonna be going from blue to brown real quick. Someone help! There's hot singles in my area! If you wanna have the same problem as me, this pack allows you to change that awful, boring message as you go to bed. You can't sleep yet. There are monsters nearby. Get out of here! Looking at the textures for crops and flowers makes me want to throw up. I mean, why even use sprites and 2D models in 2024? Instead, Mojang should have taken a page out of 3D Tomatoes book. Not only does this pack use much better models, you can even see the tomatoes at each stage of their growth. Axolotls are amazing! But can you trust them? A secret message was found in Minecraft's release notes saying, the axolotls are not what they seem. One can only imagine what sinister secrets those adorable axolotls are hiding. Finding a large diamond vein is great. What's even crazier is a maximum diamond vein. It's a whopping 48 diamonds. This only happens when the max diamond vein in a chunk connects to four other chunks at the same time. Unlike regular skeletons, nether skeletons don't have bows. But if they did, the bow would shoot fire. And there's already plenty of that in the nether already. Being stuck in a cave without any torches is one of the worst places a player can find themselves in. But this rejected miner's helmet would have brought an end to that. This helmet was intended to have a torch on top of it that would light the way as you explored the caves. But why was this rejected? Well, probably because it would require dynamic lighting, similar to how Optifine does lighting and torches. But who knows? Maybe one day we will see this helmet again. Minecraft skins are kind of pointless. You can't see your own skin in first person, leading to most single players just never setting a skin. Obviously, you have access to F5, but what would Minecraft have looked like if our next rejected idea got into the game? Mirrors. Imagine the builds people would have made using mirror mazes, huge reflective art, and so much more. This one is a real shame. I just want to stare at myself all day. I hate having to take my bed everywhere in Minecraft. I could be planning a huge adventure to find a hidden treasure, and I'd have to pack all the essentials. My tools, some food, and an entire queen-size bed. It just feels wrong, and I now see why. There was a rejected Minecraft idea that was always intended to take over for beds in this style. The sleeping bag. The sleeping bag would have been more like a portable bed, but then Mojang realized there was not much point in adding this to the game when people could just make another bed. Everyone knows that you can't stack different types of slabs on top of each other. Apparently, if you go to the world border and make a setup like this, you can use a piston and yep, it makes a really cursed looking block. This one's true. Mangrove trees are super cool, especially because they're the only tree that can be grown underwater, right? Well, the propagule is the only thing that can actually be placed down here and works perfectly. Saplings, however, get broken almost immediately. Almost immediately. If you're quick enough, you can actually grow trees down here. This definitely doesn't feel right, but hey, the game's a game. This one says that if you spawn a cat in a witch hut, it'll always be black. I've spawned about 50 of these things in here, and they're all black, so I'll say that's confirmed. Breaking blocks like clay underwater is so annoying! Sure, there's the old door trick, but that's no fun compared to TNT. But Mello, TNT doesn't work underwater! Wrong! All you need to do is place sand or gravel on top before lighting it, and it works perfectly. It barely even damages you. You can actually do the opposite as well. Placing an anvil on top of TNT before lighting it will stop it from breaking 
any blocks at all. It doesn't even damage the anvil. And again, you take almost no damage from the blast. And in case you don't have a big enough iron supply to waste on literally blowing up, there's a cheaper alternative in placing TNT on top of a half slab instead. For some reason, this also reduces the blast radius significantly. But unfortunately, you still take quite a lot of damage. If you're still using oak, acacia, or wood, you're a massive noob. Use bamboo instead. This is because bamboo is wood, but on steroids. How, you may ask? Well, bamboo grows super fast. And the best part, you can farm these almost instantly with just a stone sword. Mahaha! <laughs> or the bamboo is mine. Wait, maybe I should just buy wood from a villager instead. There are quite literally thousands of duplication glitches in Minecraft, but one of these is beyond overpowered. All you have to do is place fences below an end portal and drop a gravity block from three blocks above the portal. Unfortunately, though, Mojang hates us having fun since this only existed in Java 1.19. Wait, what if I do this with... Ah! When you leave a rejoiner world, you get a couple seconds of invincibility. So if you find yourself in a bit of a spicy situation, you can leave and rejoin over and over and swim to safety like you're made out of obsidian. The shield is one of the most overpowered items in the whole game. It can block fireballs for God's sakes. But did you know that if you go through a portal while holding right click, you'll be permanently blocking in the next dimension, letting you sprint and attack while literally invincible. You can send secret messages with skulk blocks. Skulk usually spreads to stone blocks when it absorbs experience, but it won't take over blocks made with slabs. So simply write some letters out with slabs and find a way to cover it. Sometimes it can be difficult to tell just how low durability your tools are while mining, but if you hit F3 and H at the same time, you'll get the exact number of blocks it can mine left, you nerd. But how exactly do you get lots of bone meal fast if you can't find a cherry blossom biome? One of the best supplies for this is the soul sand valleys in the nether. You should be breaking each bone block you see here since they give nine bone meal a piece. Couple this up with the farming techniques I told you about, and you could dominate your entire server with the amount of food you'd have. Yeah, I'm starting to think I like food a bit too much. What if I told you that it's possible to have ladders without having any ladders? For some reason, Minecraft freaks out when it comes to scaffoldings and lets you jump on their edge. This means you can spam the spacebar and get all the way to the top super fast. However, this isn't limited to scaffoldings alone. You can do this with powdered snow too. And getting down is incredibly simple. Just hold crouch while you're on the edge. Bad idea. If you thought that it rains because of clouds, pfft, you're a noob. Above the first set of clouds you see is another set of clouds that you can't see. According to Notch, this gray area is actually where the rain actually comes from. What's even weirder is that the rain falls one block into the void layer. Yeah, this was definitely never meant to happen. This is the Minecraft Trails and Tales trailer. And this is normal Minecraft. Yeah, this sucks. But we can fix this by using the bare bones pack. This just seems to bring everything to life and we can make it even better by using the nostalgia shaders. I guess I won't be needing to bleach my eyes now. But there's one more pack that we can add to make this even better than the trailer. I'm talking about Simple Hot Bar, which changes all the vanilla hunger bars, hearts, and even the UI boxes. Moving on to one of Minecraft's most important items, cakes! According to the way cake disappears in the game, it's clear that good old Steve is eating it vertically? This is clearly game-breaking and ruins my immersion! Mojang should have used better cake slices instead, which makes the cake disappear chunk by chunk instead. Finally, the game is playable! One of the most poor decisions was to make every single enchantment book look the same. Look at all these books. I bet you can't even tell the difference. However, using visual enchantments not only adds these sick animations to each book, but it also applies the same animations to whatever you enchant. Now, this is something that should have been in the game for years. Talking about mobs, there's tons in Minecraft. But did you know this mob was actually changed into an item? That mob is the humble sign. Yes, originally it was classed as a mob, which could only be spawned by pressing B and only had a pre-written message on it. Don't try to raid a baby strider! But even if you use a command to tame a baby strider and have a saddle on it, the moment you ride it into lava, you'll catch on fire! The baby is just too small to protect you from it. Did you know that Steve wasn't always called Steve? He actually didn't have a name at first. And they had to scramble to come up with one when they agreed to have him show up in the indie game Super Meat Boy. This special secret about iron could save your home. Because it turns out an iron chain is the same resistance against explosions as a full iron block, despite being made with way less materials. Put them in your walls and you've got a fortress. Being in the 
ground at night is so much safer than being above ground. There are less places for enemies to spawn and more places for you to hide. However, imagine a world where this was perhaps not the case. If this rejected idea had gotten into the game, caves could have been far more terrifying. Ghost miners are intended to be added into Minecraft to be an exclusively underground enemy for you to fight, able to slide through walls while slowly approaching you. Ugh, I do not like ghosts. People often wonder why it took Mojang five years to add in a new overworld biome, and that is because of this rejected Minecraft idea. Originally, Mojang were working on a giant redwood forest biome. This most likely would have come out at some point around 2020, or perhaps even replaced a biome like the giant tree tiger. I certainly hope Minecraft brings us back one day. The most useful chest in Minecraft is certainly the ender chest, but sometimes it feels way too small, and as though there is never enough room for all of my valuable items. If this next rejected idea had been made, you would have said bye to all of your storage issues. Expandable ender chests were originally planned up around the same time as the End Islands update, as Mojang wanted players to be able to transfer important blocks from one location to another. However, Mojang decided that the best way to do this would be through shulkers as opposed to expanding an ender chest. All my life, I've made this huge enchanting setup with all these bookshelves. But apparently, you only need 15 bookshelves in total, meaning this tiny setup works just as well as this one. And wait, is that actually true? My life is a lie. There are three different types of overworld frog, warm, cold, and temperate. But supposedly, there's a four secret frog you can only get in the end. If you take two frogs and lead them to the stronghold, send them through the portal and feed them slime balls, the tadpoles will grow into super frogs. Yeah, I just made that up. They're just normal. Myth busted. This myth says you can shoot fire arrows to the bottom of a lava cauldron, but there's no way that's true. Can you even shoot below them at all? Huh, wait, I guess it is true. How didn't I know that? Am I stupid or something? Are you one of those weirdos that prefers using donkeys over horses for the extra storage space? First of all, why are you using horses in the first place? It's 2023, man, get a Lytra. But secondly, llamas are a way better option. They can have up to 15 inventory slots and form groups of 10 that follow each other around. Using shulker boxes, you can transport up to 4,000 stacks of blocks with you. That's this many blocks, more than you'd ever need. And if you need another reason to make the switch to llamas, check this out. While horses and donkeys just sink like rocks when you try to ride them in water, llamas can swim. You still can't control them or anything, but if you need a fancy pool float or something, llamas work perfectly. Fireworks can be used for a bunch of things these days, but I bet you never thought of making a cannon with them. That's right, fireworks launched from dispensers actually do damage to mobs, meaning firework crossbows are out, and this is the new best way to take out mobs. Speaking of, if you're looking for a block to build your TNT base farms out of, waterlogged leaves might be for you. They're totally blast resistant and super easy to get a hold of. Just be careful you don't accidentally flood your redstone. End portal flames are one of the only impossible blocks to break in Minecraft, right? Wrong! Using a red mushroom plate just right, you can grow it with bone meal and use it to totally delete the frames. Chests usually can't be opened when they've got a block above them. So explain how this works. It's actually just a stair placed backwards. This also works with any other block that's not just as big as a normal block, such as farmland or path blocks, and leaves you a bunch of new opportunities to hide away your goodies. Skeletons can usually see you from about this far. It's around 16 blocks, which, to be fair, is pretty good for a life form with bones for eyeballs. But if you chuck on a mob head like a zombie or skeleton skull, this distance gets much smaller and allows you to get as close as eight blocks away without them seeing you. The only problem is that now I can't see anything. Speaking of skeletons, there's actually a super clever way to get music discs that I bet you didn't know. Their arrows will turn to fireballs when shot through lava and can even light TNT. This means you can collect a bunch of creepers in a pit and blow them all up with a skeleton like this and end up with dozens of music discs almost instantly. Hitting a mob with a channeling trident in a thunderstorm makes possibly the worst noise in the game. It's so loud! You've heard of going above bedrock, but what about below it? In an older version of Minecraft, you could phase through the bottom layer of bedrock by placing a boat on the thinnest part of the water. Okay, this was a horrible idea, Dad! I wish I could unsee the flower textures forever. Mojang decided to curse my eyes by using 2D sprites for all potted plants and not making them 3D. This almost feels as wrong as mining diamonds with a stone pickaxe. Where the f the diamonds. Being able to place floating lava should be a war crime. However, by using seven slime blocks, five sticky pistons, four redstone blocks, and four obsidian, you can set up this machine that lets you place floating lava blocks. The best part is this isn't even limited to lava. You can do the same thing with water. Rails are one of the best things Mojang added to the game, but we can make them even better by simply putting a trap door below them, which makes it so they can float in midair. Pair this up with a contraption like the one shown to get minecarts with infinite momentum 
momentum, and you can quite literally have the most illegal railway in the game. You should always have a hoe that is enchanted with Fortune 3 when farming, which will allow you to quite literally triple the rate at which you can get food. For example, you can get up to 9 melon slices for each melon block farmed. This enchantment is so broken. Bone meal is one of the most important resources you need in order to get rich fast, and in the cherry grove biome, you can get a huge amount of it in just a few minutes. To do so, quickly harvest all the pink petals you see, or you can be even faster and use a water bucket and place the water like this to get a huge flow. Give me all those petals! If everything in Minecraft is a cube, it only makes sense that the sun and moon should be two. While Notch made them into squares in an old version of the game, we can take this one step further by using the cubic moon and sun packs. This makes it so that your world's day and night cycles are controlled by these massive cubes. Although, you don't want to look at them directly. Ah! My eyes! I can proudly say that I've never been scared of mobs in Minecraft, but this kind of pride goes down the drain after using Gray's mob overhaul. A simple texture pack makes every mob look like a Frankenstein creation. From the skeletons, to the zombies, to striders, to the wither, every single mob is going to force you to either take a quick trip to the washroom or just set your monitor on fire. Did I also mention that creepers actually look creepy now instead of looking like snot balls? While Gray's mob overhaul is horrifying, we can upgrade that to trauma inducing by using spawn animations. Instead of appearing out of thin air like they usually do, mobs now dig themselves out of the ground. Even though this is scary, making mobs scarier than they are right now is something that Mojang should have added to the game long ago. The current textures for leaves look as bad as a bald man sticking chunks of hair on his head. Yeah, it's disgusting. However, better leaves can fight this absolute tragedy by making the leaves look like, well, actual leaves by adding depth to each individual part of the leaf block. It was this simple? The nether portal Mojang designed just feels empty. By that, I mean it's like someone threw up a purple poster. However, we can see its true potential by using the mystic nether portal. Not only does this give a massive texture overhaul, but also adds these ancient letters into the portal animations itself. Fun fact, the symbols you see are the actual letters that Minecraft uses throughout the game. The standard galactic alphabet. But that's not even the best part. Your portal can be green, orange, or even red, depending on whether or not you use traditional texture packs. The villagers are hiding a secret. They're actually super fast. Don't believe me. Well, it only happens during nightfall when they're under attack. Their top speed is actually faster than a player sprinting. I don't know you're saying Bolt was white. Mojang put a secret that's hiding in plain sight. See? This end crystal actually has a secret message written on it. It's the word Mojang. It's a fact that game updates can reverse soul changes, but in early Minecraft development, this happened a lot. At one point, they stopped leaves disappearing when the trees were cut down, then changed it back to disappear, then stopped it again, and then again changed it to disappear. A cool secret your friends won't know is that while witches can fight each other, they might never win. Their healing potion is more than their damage, so you can put them in a glass box and set them up as a permanent display. Redstone can be used in two different ways. You are either a genius who can create a working computer in Minecraft, or you place a button next to a note block. This next rejected Minecraft idea would have brought an entirely different level to redstone engineering. The timer block would have given off a redstone pulse after the timer had reached zero. This would have been amazing for setting up traps and then messing with your friends. Minecraft's food solutions are kind of boring. The only food in the game you can actually place is a cake and then eat it too. However, did you know that originally the pumpkin pie was intended to be a placeable block similar to the cake? It would have worked the same way as the cake where you take a couple of slices at a time until your hunger is full. I am honestly not sure why Mojang never implemented this. Step right up, step right up, come and try for your prize. We have iron horse armor, diamond horse armor, gold horse armor, and a regular boring saddle. Well, those prizes hardly seem fun. I wish there was a different type of saddle. Well, originally there would have been. Before they decided to make horse armor, they were originally planned to be different saddle types. Instead, now we get the same regular boring saddle. You can use these fire arrows to light TNT, but what else does this work with? Eggs and projectiles. Do they work? Oh yeah, they do. Snowballs would just melt, wouldn't they? Nope, that works too. Okay, there's no way the fishing rod works too. It does? That's insane! Oh no. Have you ever been to the cinema and had your eardrums blown out by the super loud noise? Well, legend has it this was actually added to Minecraft. If you find a 2% screaming goat, it has a 1 in 4 chance of dropping the call horn. And when you blow it, I'll say that's confirmed. You can make a door with end rods that mobs can't get through. This one's weird because the end rods are thin enough for us to walk through. So why wouldn't mobs be able to? Oh, huh, I guess it works. That's strange. Maybe they see them as full blocks like they do with trap doors? Grindstones remove the enchants from items, so surely it makes sense for it to do the same for a notch apple, right? Oh, I guess not. Why would you even want to do that? Wait, what if I put an enchantment on it with an anvil and then put it in the grindstone after? There we go. I'll call that one a maybe. Although it doesn't look it, villagers can actually wear 
armor. They can even wear mob heads and pumpkins, but nobody wants to see that. You can use dispensers to equip it to them, and even put enchantments on each piece of armor, including Thorn's enchantment. God, that's an embarrassing death message. Oh, and by the way, that mob head thing works on piglins too, and it's somehow even worse! Everyone knows how cowardly villagers are, especially around anything that even has a possibility of hurting them. But I bet you never noticed they actually sweat during raids. At least, I heard that sweat. They really don't have much to worry about though, because some of these villagers actually have morals? These scary ex guys called Vindicators refuse to kill baby villagers, so at least when they grow up, they can rebuild the village. Uh, never mind. Luckily, this crazy lightning generator isn't quite as loud. You can make it with a piston, lightning rod, and channeling trident. And having a bunch of them allows you to do, well, not much really. But I guess you can trap your friend in a box like this and give them an electrifying experience. <laughs> Did you know that you can actually totally skip the Ender Dragon fight? By building a simple flying machine like this, you can fly all the way to the outer islands without so much as touching the Ender Dragon, allowing you to raid as many end cities as you want for all the loot you could ever dream of. However, the only way out is, uh, down there. So do this at your own risk, I guess. Snow golems will die almost instantly underwater, while iron golems will sink but just kinda chill? This is already strange enough, but it gets even weirder when you realize you can actually spawn snow golems underwater, but not iron golems. But while we're down here, here's another cool underwater fact that might even save your life. Next time you find yourself stranded outside at night, swarmed by mobs and unable to sleep, try heading into a river or ocean. You'll be able to chuck a bed down and sleep just fine. You can even breathe down here for some reason. Everyone knows that the weather is immune to arrows in its second phase, but I bet you didn't know that fireworks will still damage it, letting you sit back and relax as you watch the show. Oh crap, wait, it can still hit me! Baby foxes might be the cutest mob in the entire game, which is why I'm sorry that I have to show you this next fact. And some older versions are actually so adorable and tiny, and if they find themselves in water, their mouth is actually underwater and they'll end up drowning. Poor thing. Have you ever noticed how item drops in Minecraft are always vertical? I'm no Einstein, but how can a piece of armor stay upright? Well, item physics makes this much more realistic by making all items drop horizontal. Not only that, it also manipulates how items lay on the ground to trick you into thinking that they are actually in contact with the blocks below them. Ah, uh, I love playing Minecraft for realism. Brewing charts will be the end of me! Why couldn't the devs have just told us what potion each item makes? Kind of like what Alchemy Helper does by adding what kind of potion will be made if you brew an item. This even goes as far as adding extra information to flowers to make it easier to craft suspicious stews. In the 1.6 update of Minecraft, they added horses, and it turns out this was brought in from an unofficial fan mod. Mojang saw Dr. Zark's Mo Creatures mod, and even copied the horse model itself. Wandering traders look great, but what your friends don't know is that you can breed their llamas, and the babies will keep the clothes of their parents. It's a weird little detail, but you can make a whole army of fashionable llama. Mojang love making secret references to other games, such as when an evoker sees a blue sheep. The evoker casts a unique spell, makes a weird wololo sound and turns a sheep red. It's a reference to Age of Empires, where monks would convert enemies to their side, chanting wololo and changing their color. Time to hit the town for a shopping spray. Let's see, a fletching villager. Well, that makes sense. A librarian selling books. That also makes sense. A cleric selling an engineering component. Wait, what? Surely there must have been a redstone villager. Well, actually, it turns out, yes, there was meant to be a redstone villager. A villager who would only sell and accept redstone components and torches. The problem was the rest of his trades. It was very difficult to find a balanced way to get emeralds and trade them back to him without being insanely expensive or way too easy to obtain. Decorating in Minecraft is really difficult and frustrating. Imagine a world where your furniture could look like actual furniture. Now this is better. This was actually Mojang's original plan. However, at the time, it was a lot more difficult to implement this, and Mojang had so many bugs to fix across their versions, so they just abandoned the idea, leaving it to amazing modders to make this. Time to kick back and watch some Mallow YouTube videos, where you should subscribe. Crime. Speaking of golden apples, apparently there's always one single golden apple in this chest right here. And it's actually the key to a secret room in the ancient city. If you take it down here and eat it in this exact spot, this door will open. All that's inside is a bunch of redstone stuff I don't understand, but hey, it's true. And if we head back up, there's this huge abandoned portal looking thing right in the middle of the city. But have you actually seen anyone like this thing before? Here we go. It works. Let's see where it takes us. Oh, just another. Probably because this is actually just obsidian. This one's false. Apparently, you can actually make two block jumps with cactus or fire damage. You just have to time it perfectly. 
got that. But I did it! I've heard you can do it with a bubble column too. Oh yeah, that's way easier and much less painful. You can get floating Minecraft tracks by placing them on trap doors and flipping them down. Aside from this just looking really weird, you can make some pretty crazy traps with this, as all the rails disappear at once when anything updates them. While testing this, I realize you can actually walk underneath trap doors even though you're way taller than this gap. And your head even sticks into the trap door. Yo, Mallow, is that a fresh cut? No, 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 please! Shulkers are one of the most mysterious mobs in Minecraft. I can't even figure out what they're supposed to be. But it turns out if you throw an invisibility potion at one, all is revealed. The Shulker's shell disappears, leaving the Shulker itself floating in midair. I'm still no closer to understanding what on earth this thing is, but I guess he's, like, cute. It's common knowledge now that villagers are the best way to farm items, but it takes so long to cure them. But it turns out if you place iron bars near the zombie villager, you can actually speed it up a bunch. The wiki says this works with beds too. But when I tested this, it seemed like it was fake. But let me know in the comments if it works for you. It's no secret that Mojang is sometimes a little lazy when it comes to textures, with bedrock just being an overly saturated stone, and endstone being an inverted version of cobblestone. But I bet none of you realize that the jungle log texture is just a rotated version of the oak log. Speaking of being overpowered though, did you know that creepers can climb ladders? I'm already terrified of getting ninja bombed by them in ravines. Why do I have to be scared of this now too? But creepers have been hiding another secret from us too. If they're affected by a potion effect from an arrow, or you know, a potion, when they explode, they'll leave a lingering pool of that potion effect wherever they stood. What can you use this for? Don't ask questions! Moving on! If you're a psycho and actually play bedrock, this chunk visualizer is the only thing that can keep you sane. Not only that, it even displays the coordinates without having to bring up this ugly menu that takes up half the screen. But Mallow, can we just use the F3 shortcut? Stop! Bedrock players aren't allowed an opinion! Imagine if Minecraft had a setting where you can make all the utility tweaks you ever needed. Better textures, a real-time clock, a coordinate HUD, everything! That's why Vanilla Tweaks is the most overpowered mod to exist in the game. This is the ultimate all-in-one pack that allows you to modify any texture and download utility within seconds. Most importantly, you can rehaul the way your entire game looks with tons of block textures. Look at my massive crop field! Can you even tell which of these are ready to be harvested? Yeah, not even Herobrine would be able to do that. Fortunately though, Easy Farm can be outlining fully grown crops in white. This is especially useful for nether warts because they all look the same for God's sake! Mobs in Minecraft just seem to plop over as they die. And this is awfully boring! Something like torturable health bars is far better. The warden loses an ear. The enderman starts looking like he went through war and jaws for skeletons fall off. Fleshier mobs like the zombie and husk lose parts of their head. Wait, this game just became PG-18? A fish out of water bounces and flops. But you can actually get them jumping way higher. On a slime block, they'll gain height, sometimes up to 17 blocks high. The world famous creeper is the face of Minecraft, but they actually have a secret past. They weren't designed. They were an accident! Like my birth. The developers were trying to make pigs, but instead of making them long, they made them extra tall. This created the frightening creature we know today. Did you know that spiders never touch the ground? That's because of how the model is made. Even though it's on the floor, the legs never actually reach the block below it. A secret, dirty little trick you can do is build an end portal above your friend's bed. So when they respawn, they'll instantly teleport to the end and will have to live there until the bed or the portal is broken. The nether is a pretty uneasy place, and none are quite as uneasy as the Soul Stand Valley. It's massive expanses of sand containing trapped souls. But one day they decided to add in these massive bone structures to resemble a long dead species. Now, what if I told you that this species was originally going to have lived in the overworld? That is right, as there was originally going to be large skeletal remains found deep underground, but unfortunately they had some issues with spawning and were rejected and instead used as a structure for the soul sand valleys. Andesite. Boring. Diorite. Boring. Granite. Boring. Stone. Why are all these so boring? But did you know there was initially meant to be another stone variant called bluestone? Why this was rejected is largely unknown, but I imagine it would have looked kind of weird. Villagers cover the world in Minecraft, but there are some biomes where the villagers were just kind of forgotten. Jungle villagers are confirmed to have at one point been a thing. But I bet you didn't know that initially there were plans to have a village in the mushroom biome. Well, this is one that certainly makes sense, but I would argue that this biome was interesting and rare enough that adding a village would make it next to impossible to find. I bet you never knew how weird coal generation really is. Usually, my Minecraft creates two batches of coal per chunk, with each batch existing at different Y values. One of these exists between Y equals 136 and Y equals 256, while the other is between Y equals 0 and Y equals 192. This gives us a perfect estimate for where we can find the most coal, which is from Y equals 136 
and y equals 192, since the ranges for both batches will overlap at these values. But most times, this generation isn't equal, and blobs spawn randomly, with most of them being found at y equals 96. Now you know exactly where you should be farming it. When a warden starts chasing you, good luck surviving that. So, what do you do in a situation like this? Well, you're gonna have to make sure your armor is enchanted with Swift Sneak 2 or higher, which will allow you to get away. However, you still need to be careful of the warden's ranged attack, because that thing is no joke. And if you have the time, pull down your render distance down to two chunks. The moment you stop hearing his footsteps means that he's far enough and will most likely calm down. I'm finally safe! Contrary to popular belief, growing crops isn't as simple as just smacking down a few seeds into the ground. There's actually a technique that goes into how you plant them. From your water source, move out four blocks diagonally. And then from this one, continue tiling until you're almost two blocks ahead of your water source. Then start tiling in the opposite direction until you have an almost checkerboard pattern like this. Now, I know this looks insanely cursed, but it's the most efficient way to farm. And since these need at least a night level of nine to grow properly, don't forget to throw on a few torches. Don't mind me and my infinite supply of melon. We've all felt the disappointment of not receiving rainbow wool from a jeb sheep, but apparently if you surround a wool block with eight different dice, you'll finally get it. Ugh, never mind. There's that disappointment again. My bad. But speaking of dyes, I was told that the white tulip doesn't actually give you white dye. The red, orange, and pink tulips all give you the right dye. But yeah, the white one doesn't. I absolutely love alleys, and it turns out they're even better than I thought. Apparently, they're totally immune to our attacks while holding an item. If you punch them normally, they'll just run away. But if you throw them an item, literally nothing can hurt them. These things are just so cute. But alleys aren't the only mob that can pick up items. Zombies and foxes can too. So let's try giving each of them a totem of undying and see if they can use them. Okay, zombies can, which is just terrifying, and foxes can as well. But what about alleys? I feel truly horrible doing this, but let's try it out. Oh, thank God. I wouldn't have been able to live with myself. Speaking of beds, did you know that there used to be a sky dimension planned for Minecraft? It was supposed to be a magical realm in the sky that you could access through dreams. Each time you went to sleep, there would be a chance you'd wake up here instead. Unfortunately, this idea was eventually replaced by the end. But I'd love to see them bring back this idea. While you were busy having sniper duels or hiding away, praying they wouldn't see you, skeletons have been hiding a dark secret. Okay, it's not that dark, but around 11% of them are actually left-handed and hold their bows differently to the rest. Apparently, this is to mirror the amount of real people who are left-handed. Also, even though wither skeletons can't spawn naturally with a bow, they still have a line of code that lets them shoot fire arrows when they're given one with commands. Weird, right? Have you ever noticed that the sky actually changes color during the wither fight? That's right. As soon as the fight begins, the horizon turns a deep, ashy gray, and some clouds become much darker. Too bad nobody will ever see this because we all fight the wither underground now. Like mole people. No matter how high they fall from, cats will never take full damage. You can send them all the way from build limit to bedrock and they'll walk away like nothing happened. Conversely, dogs do take damage. And anvil damage! It's just so beautiful. Zombified piglins are terrifying to fight in the nether. But if you manage to get a weapon powerful enough to kill them in one hit, they won't get mad. And you can take them out one by one. Flower forests are one of the prettiest biomes in the game. And one of the easiest places to farm all the different dyes too. But strangely, the flowers don't actually generate in random places. Each area in this biome can only spawn a specific flower. Which means you can map it out using bone meal to create a really cool effect. Bees in Minecraft actually work really similar to how they do in real life. When they sting you, they don't just lose their stinger and end up dying shortly after. They actually leave it inside you. It's easiest to see when you turn invisible and ugh, why are they adding tweezers to the game? Let's take torturable health bars a step further by using Streisand's health bars. Although having each mob display their health feels like it's cheating, it's an awesome addition for newer players and could even potentially save you from <clears throat> unaliving a villager or two. Let's use x-ray. Wait, hear me out. There are tons of illegitimate ways to get x-ray in the game, but using x-ray ultimate is completely okay if you intend to use it in a single player world. This can be super useful if you're looking for something like ancient debris or emeralds, but are the world's unluckiest player. But this is only for noobs. I haven't used it at all. <laughs> what else was I supposed to do? Maybe the wrong banner patterns has driven me insane. I wish I had known about banner pattern clarity much earlier. This allows you to see small symbols on banners or you put them in a loom to ensure that you don't end up wasting resources. I've missed diamonds hundreds of times at this point, all because this game is way too dark. However, Mining Helper is one of the most OP textures to exist since it gives every ore a glow in the dark effect. I'm never missing an ore after this. <laughs> the blue axolotl is the rarest version of that mob in Minecraft, but the announcement for Caves and Cliffs Part 1 shows off the green axolotl. This was an early version of the axolotl that never made it into the release game, making it even rarer than the blue one. The heart of the sea is this blue orb, but it holds a secret. When fully activated, 
waited as a conduit, the heart opened, showing a staring orange eye. This ancient fact is from even before Minecraft was made. It turns out the original Apple Sprite in Minecraft is from a previous game made by Notch called Legend of the Chambered. So you should always have a hoe that is enchanted with Fortune 3 when farming, which will allow you to quite literally triple the rate at which you can get food. For example, you can get up to 9 melon slices for each melon block farmed. This enchantment is so broken. Farming levels can be one of the most time-consuming aspects of playing Minecraft, especially when you don't have an XP farm starting out. So, one of the best ways to get levels while being relatively safe is by farming nether quartz in the nether. Not only does this have a 45% chance of spawning, meaning it's literally everywhere, but it is also the best source to farm for experience right after diamonds, since it will give you experience ranging anywhere between 2 to 5 points. Once you reach higher levels, you might find yourself struggling with experience. So, here's how to get infinite XP. While using a furnace, smelt a material like iron. And just as it's done, swap it out with an already smelted iron. The only currency this will cost is your patience. Have you ever been sitting watching YouTube in your bed at 2am and suddenly the brightness on your phone screen has gone up? Ah! A rejected idea for Minecraft was to have an opposite potion to the darkness effect. A brightness effect where the screen would become so bright that you could not see anything. And you essentially became sunblind. I can see why this one was rejected as, wow, this is bright. Careful, don't make a sound. Achoo! Oh no! Run away! <sighs> I think I got away. I wish I had this next rejected Minecraft idea. The potion of silence, which was as you would expect, makes you silent. Swift Sneak is a very useful enchantment, but sometimes I do not want to break my finger holding down the crouch key. If I had this potion, I could run straight by this warden and he would not even flinch. Pots have not had many updates since their release besides new or retextured versions popping up here and there. There was, however, originally a plan for an iron boat, but I think we can see why this one was rejected. The boat probably would not work very well. I want a pet! No, I'm not after a cat. Hmm, parrots are kind of boring. Dogs? Ew! Wait, I haven't seen this one before. Yes, you heard it here. Originally, dolphins were meant to be tameable and rideable like an underwater horse. Why this idea was scrapped is beyond me. Please, Minecraft, give me a mob I can ride underwater. Apparently, you can repair iron golems. If you see one or cracked up after a fight, you should be able to take some iron ingots and right-click on it. Hey, yeah, it fixes it right back up. That's super cool. I recently learned you can place beds underwater. Well, what's the point if you can't sleep in it? I mean, surely I can't hold my breath down here for eight hours. I'd... Oh. I guess I can. Okay, but obviously that doesn't work under lava. It's, what the hell, Mojang? In real life, people think coal and diamonds are both made out of the same thing. This means that if you apply enough pressure, like with a piston, you can literally turn coal into diamonds. And surprise, surprise, it doesn't work. Probably because it's not even true in real life. It's a myth there too. Double busted. It's been forever since we got a new note block sound, but apparently Mojang secretly added a new one just recently. All you have to do is place them on top of an iron block and right-click them 64 times each. Then when you activate them, Oh god, why? Putting carpets on top of fences lets you jump over them while keeping animals in. But did you know there's an even better way of doing this? Animals can jump over trap doors just fine going one way. But if they try to leave, they walk straight into them. This makes it 100 times easier to collect animals and get in and out your pen without 1,000 chickens escaping through the gate. Oxalotls are up there with bees for the cutest mob in Minecraft. They come in these four normal colors and one super rare shiny blue axolotl that's actually a reference to the Pokemon Mudkip. And speaking of fish, kind of? Some cruel player discovered that if you take fish out of their favorite aquatic home and place them on a bunch of slime blocks, they'll start to bounce really high super fast. However, it's not likely to last long as there's a few, shall we say, occupational hazards for our bounty swimming friends. The only thing I like more than this little guy has to be the frogs that got added in 1.19. I just wanted to show you what its eating animation looks like in slow motion. That's it. That's the fact. Everybody knows that naming a mob Dinner Bone flips it upside down, but I bet you didn't know there's a second secret name that does the same thing. If you call the mob Grum with two M's instead, it'll do the same thing. This was added at the same time as Dinner Bone, so I kind of feel bad he didn't get as much attention. Poor Grum. If you're like me, you probably still manage to get lost even with a map, but if you name a banner and place it down at your base, you can right-click it with the map, and a marker will pop up showing you exactly where home is. Remember the last time you used a furnace minecart? Yeah, me neither, but there is actually a way to use them that kind of makes them useful, I guess? If you push a furnace minecart into a chest minecart, they'll actually couple together, allowing you to transfer a huge bunch of resources easily without choker boxes. It all completely falls apart the second a corner or hill appears, but hey, they've got the spirit. Honey blocks are so sticky that mobs like villagers can't actually jump off them, meaning you can use them to hold them in place. And if you've spent ages pushing villagers around or using 
using boats to move them, I'm about to blow your mind. You can't bait villagers around with seeds or carrots, but you can get them to follow you simply by having a chat with them. It seems they're so excited to trade with you that they just won't leave you alone, letting you bring them pretty much wherever you want. And if anything was to uh, happen to your villagers, don't use potions of weakness to heal them. Instead, you should use tipped arrows with a crossbow. If you have a high enough piercing level, you can shoot through multiple villagers and then pick the arrow up after allowing you to cure hundreds of villagers with just one arrow. Nether stars are incredibly important for crafting beacons, but there's something about these objects that you never knew. These are in fact explosion proof, and this makes sense because they need to survive the wither's death. But that's not the best part. They are still not immune to lava, cacti, and anvils. Wait, hold up! A nether star can survive TNT but not my diamonds? Minecraft has had a massive run of bugs and items that should never have existed. But there was one that was far more insane than anything you'll ever see. In one of the earliest alphas in 2010, pressing F4 would allow you to spawn in nether portals. What was Mojang even thinking? Did you know you can make TNT blocks freak out completely? By placing an anvil on top of TNT before lighting it up, you can make it do zero damage. You can do this for massive amounts of TNT and give your friends a heart attack. Or if you want TNT to explode underwater, place a block of sand above it and then light it up. And you might be wondering how this works. Well, you'd be surprised to know I don't know either. One of the most hyped features for the game was the sky dimension that Notch wanted to add during early development. But unfortunately, this never happened. However, there was something similar in its very first year of launch. In the in-dev version, you could set your map type to floating island. This was similar to the buffet world types we've seen recently, and the entire surface used to be covered with bedrock. Yeah, we definitely need this back. Mojang missed out on one of the best jokes of the century by not making suspicious sand sus. Additionally, since this pack gives sus blocks such a unique texture, it's impossible to miss them. Unless there's an imposter. If you haven't used Zali's potions yet, you're missing out on one of the greatest textures of all time. This gives every kind of potion its own unique texture, and also works for both lingering and splash potions. Mojang, you need to take notes. You might have heard of Faithful, but have you ever used Kingdoms? This is one of the craziest texture packs to ever exist, as it completely overhauls the game to a medieval fantasy version of Minecraft. From the UI, to the animals, to even the nether, the creators of this pack have missed nothing. Hell, take a look at the striders, and I guarantee you won't be sleeping for a few days. This is a must try. Don't be so hasty with enchantments. Some have hidden properties, like quick charge. At level 6 and above, crossbows with this enchantment stops the reload animation at the first frame, which is before the crossbow is loaded, and so won't load at all. Here's a trick that will freak your friends out. Carpet can actually be placed on any non-air block, even lava. It's tricky and dangerous, but you can walk on lava like it's nothing. It's easiest with moss carpet, as that doesn't burn. Slabs are one of the most useful blocks in Minecraft for building a roof. Seriously, I don't ever use them for anything. But what if I told you that at one point, you could have been able to use slabs as a wall? Well, originally Mojang planned on adding in vertical slabs, but thought people would use them as a wall, so instead, they created the wall block. Right, I can definitely find the stronghold now. Let me just throw this end over my Wait, where did it go? Oh, it is trapped down there? Ah, time to mine for it, I guess. How did I not find it? Ugh, I just wish the ender eye cleared the blocks in its path. Well, at one point, this is an idea that Mojang brought to the table. However, they were concerned this ruined the adventure aspect of finding a stronghold, so they removed it. Ah, there it is. This is a straight redstone trail. Pretty simple, right? Well, this is a straight line of redstone going up. Why is this so complicated? Well, originally, it wasn't supposed to be. Mojang actually rejected the idea to have redstone be vertical as well as horizontal. Imagine all the amazing elevator bills and more I could make if they had not ruined this for me. Camels look just delightful when they're walking around. <laughs> yeah, look at their little ears, I love them. Apparently cauldrons can totally absorb full damage. If they're filled with water, surely I won't die. Oh, okay, what if I actually try to get in the middle? Well, that, even that doesn't work. I literally fell into water. Fine, if that doesn't work, what if I try without water? It works. They even bounce you. Crazy, right? I'm just kidding, these are slime blocks. Tricked you though, didn't I? Whenever you try to run underwater, you just get put into the swimming animation. It's apparently this changes when you run on mud. Hey, it's true. I think this is because mud is just a little bit shorter than a regular block, so it should work with soul sand too, right? Oh wait, bubbles, yeah. I'm not smart. We're all pretty aware of Minecraft's food chain now. Creepers hate ocelots, foxes hate chickens and rabbits, mallow hates dogs, but one toxic relationship you probably don't know about is that polar bears hate foxes. It doesn't usually go too well for the polar bears though, as foxes are way faster. And because foxes can step on powder snow just fine, the bears are sometimes baited in and get stuck. On the topic of foxes though, I have to know, am I stupid for not knowing? 
knowing this next one. Foxes don't just attack rabbits and chickens by walking up and biting them. They also sneak up and pounce on them by jumping super high into the air. What's crazier is that if they land on snow, they'll actually get stuck and shake around trying to free themselves. I swear these guys have been in the game for ages and I've never seen this. I must be an idiot, right? Slime blocks, honey blocks, and hay bales can all be used to reduce fall damage when using a drop shoot. But they all have drawbacks. Instead, put a waterlogged chest at the bottom. You won't take any fall damage, you don't bounce, and it doesn't slow you down. The light of a beacon looks great from close or far. A cool secret aspect is how it reacts to stained glass. Each glass put in the way of the beam changes the color, making millions of possible shades. Here's a fact you might not know. The illusioner can't handle boats. They get so confused that when shooting their bows, the arrows go backwards. In the original trailer for Minecraft, way back in 2011, this mysterious other variant of Steve was present. He's not available as a choice in the launcher, so this is the only example of him that exists. The end wasn't always where it is now. During early developments, the end was supposed to be a sky dimension. Secretly, they saw the sky dimension as heaven, and the nether as hell. This spooky fact runs a chill down my spine, because if you play the music discs 5, 11, and 13, after 5, 11, and 13 seconds, they combine to play the sound of a survivor's terrifying story. Does blowing up balls give you XP? I know it gives you 100% of the resources now, but I've never dared to mine diamonds with it. Oh yeah, it does give XP. I think I'll stick to my pickaxe though. This just feels wrong. Apparently, you can't spawn weathers in snowy biomes. Yeah, snowy tiger, frozen peaks, and even snowy beaches don't work. Wait, what if you break the snow layers below? Ah, there, myth busted. It works. I should probably run away now. According to this myth, there's actually a time where looking in an enderman's eyes is a good idea. Obviously, they became aggressive when you first look at them. But from now on, whenever you lock eyes, they'll freeze completely in place. I don't know what you do from here, but hey, this myth is true. Swift Sneak is already an amazing enchantment. But did you know that if you run and jump into your sneak instead of just sneaking normally, you'll sneak around 33% faster? I really like saying sneak, did you tell? Speaking of sneaking, I just really wanted to say that, you can create secret ladders out of powder snow that only you can use. It's literally as simple as placing a column of powder snow somewhere and chucking on some leather boots, and only you will be able to climb it. What item do you think is used in the most crafting recipes in the game? Wood? Maybe sticks? How about diamonds? Turns out it's actually iron ingots. They're used in 34 different recipes, which is more than anything else. Well, kind of. With the introduction of chiseled bookshelves in 1.20, wooden planks are now also used for 34 recipes in Java Edition. Riveting! Normally, to craft end crystals, you need to have an eye of ender, a gas tier, and seven glass. But what if I told you that you could get it within a fraction of the time with just a little bit of luck? In Minecraft 1.9, Snapshot 15W44A, it was possible to obtain end crystals from skeleton trap horses. Although finding one is rare, it's much less annoying than having to deal with the Enderman and gas. I will never figure out my Mojang ended up removing this. Do they hate us or something? Call me a weirdo, but I love the Sniffers because I'm a massive farmer. So you can imagine my surprise when I found out how to insta-hatch their eggs. All you have to do is place two moss blocks and a sniffer egg in front of a sticky piston. Let this run for 10 minutes and the moss blocks will now be glitched permanently, allowing you to insta-hatch sniffer eggs. Hey, stop coming after me! Hey, no! I bet you wouldn't believe me if I told you that it's possible to loot ocean monuments not even enter them. Mark the spots I'm showing you on these pyramid-like structures that are on the outside of the monument. You can pick either side, and all you have to do is place down a door and dig the block under you. If you see dark prismarine, congratulations because you've just hit the jackpot! This makes finding gold a million times easier. This cool trick lets you explode TNT underwater. If you put a sand block on top and then ignite the TNT, the block will fall into it, making sure the water doesn't stop the explosion. Use this crazy secret to spook your friends. There is no limit to the amount of bats that can hang from one block. For other animals, the game stops this from happening. But you can pack the bats in as much as you want. Stick them in the walls and watch your friends unleash them all by accident. Creatures from the nether hate the water. Except for the magma cubes. They can swim just fine in it without getting hurt. Worried about invisible players? Well, this little fact might save you. Because enchanting tables will react to you even if you're invisible. Llamas are amazing. And even more so when they hit the water. Unlike pigs or horses, llama actually floats on top of the water like a boat when you ride them. But only the richest players can test this myth out. Apparently, nether stars are disappointed when you explode them. It feels so wrong to do this, but let's try it. Hey, it actually works. You can even do it with stacks of them without losing any. I bet you can even put them in item frames and oh no. This works because it would really suck if you killed a wither and the star got blown up by the final skull. But what if you were fighting it near lava? Would you still be safe? Nope. <laughs> Easiest bust yet. Apparently armor doesn't actually protect you from potions of harming. Okay, so I take six hearts without any armor. Let's try with full diamonds. Yeah, look, six hearts as well. Okay, what about with full protection? Four. Now it's just two hearts. I guess I may as well just use leather armor now. Myth confirmed. <laughs> bow charge animations are straight up boring. Mojang should have done something similar to this bow charger pack in 
instead. This changes the color of the bow as it begins to charge from red to green once fully charged. Nothing hits harder than losing a bow contest to a skeleton. One of the most annoying things is this disgusting overlay once you put on a pumpkin. Luckily for us though, we can fix this easily by using this no pumpkin overlay. With that overlay gone, you can finally see! It's like wearing glasses all over again. Waterless glass is something that we would never have to download. Just look at the difference with and without this pack. It's crazy. The best part is that you don't even need Optifine to run this. Finally, my OCD is fixed. What do you think of when I say degrading tools? No, we aren't gonna be yelling at them. This pack makes tools lose parts of their UI models as you use them. This works even for something like the flint and steel. It's a small change, but makes a world of difference. Pillagers are a team, and even the Ravagers share traits with them. That's the first and third Ravager hurt sounds are actually the Pillager hurt sound. Pitch to sound much lower. This secret TNT technique can save your life. If you place TNT on a slab, explosion damages much, much fewer blocks around it, making it much less scary to handle. You could even have TNT decorate your home, if you're brave. Fishing yanks fish out of the water at speed, but it's actually not an automatic animation. The fish are actually flying through the air, and if you step aside, they'll zip right past you. Use this secret to launch fish at your friends, slapping them in the face at high speed. But when you've got this many nether stars, what do you even use them for? You obviously don't need this many beacons. Well, this myth says that if you use a nether star and a beacon instead of iron or emeralds, you'll actually receive double the effects. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to work, but come on, Mojang, you may as well add this for the people that are insane enough to use netherite to power their beacons. They deserve something! Even though it's easily the scariest biome in the game, it's said that mobs won't spawn in the deep dark at all. I spent about five minutes flying around here and I didn't see any, so I'll just call this confirmed. Obviously, there's still one mob that can spawn here, but you can even totally disable this as well with this command. Suddenly, this place isn't so scary. When copper was revealed to the community, we all jumped with joy to finally get a new type of armor and new tools. And all we got was a weird brown rod. What does this even do now? Ow! 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 Thanks, Notch! Wasn't wearing an entire suit of armor. Dad! Wait, how did this happen? Originally, copper armor was meant to be attainable, until Mojang realized having the lightning rod be made of the same material as armor was perhaps a bit dangerous. It is so unfair. This poor group of pillagers are trying desperately to take on this village, but somehow they have a hundred iron golems defending their base. Unfortunately for these pillagers, this rejected idea would have given them their own version of the iron golem, one that was instead meant to attack the villagers instead of defending them. Although they do have the Ravager now, so I think they win, actually. The World of Color update really did add a lot of new opportunities to the game, but the different colors they added are kind of restrictive. You could either have pink wall or pink concrete. However, this next rejected feature would have seen various different colors of oak planks by having them be diable. Imagine having a house made of entirely bright yellow wooden planks. Perfection. Wait, hang on. These are just regular planks. Speaking of speed, normal slimes are slow, but this slime will catch you. Slime speed is based on slime size, so size 8 and above goes faster than even a player sprinting. Want a chair you can actually sit in? Try this secret technique by guiding a llama to your house, disguising it as a chair, and turning the llama invisible. All that will be left will be the carpet, which looks great as a cushion. Here's a fun fact that also happens in real life! In the game, axolotls will not follow you unless you have a live fish in a bucket. If the fish is just dead in your hand, they won't care. This is because real axolotls only eat live fish, and the developers wanted to show that in the game. Squid can survive out of water for about 15 seconds before it runs out of oxygen. But there's a secret fact here. The fact that the squid is a special change to its animation, slowing down as the oxygen runs out. One of the oldest myths in Minecraft is that sugar canes grow faster on sand. So I'm here to finally solve this debate! I've placed 25 sugar cane on every type of sand and dirt. And when I type this command, we'll be able to see exactly which group grows fastest. And see? They all grow at pretty much the same exact speed. It's just random. It doesn't even change if you grow it on cobblestone or something. Even though it does look super cursed. Consider that myth ultra busted. Look, we all know how strong the warden is, but I've heard it's so strong that he doesn't even take damage from fire. Okay, lava doesn't damage him, and neither does regular fire. What about fire enchantments? Yeah, it doesn't affect him at all. I guess it would be kind of easy if you could just dump lava on him and run away. Myth confirmed. And apparently, wardens have so much health they can survive a drop from the very top of the world all the way down to bedrock. So let's test it. Yeah, it survives. It turns out you'd have to drop the warden exactly 504 blocks to instantly kill it, which is literally impossible in a normal world. This thing is so powerful. Witch huts have the ability to spawn, you know, witches. But also, each time one is generated, a black cat will also spawn inside. They do have a tendency to walk off, but this is actually one of only two ways to find this sleek variant of kitty. The only other way is wait until a full moon and venture out into a village, where each cat has a 50% chance of spawning as this magical black version. Have you ever 
never run out of gold for powered rails because you never collect it when you're caving? Don't worry, so has literally everybody else that plays this game. But that means there's a solution! Putting a saddled pig in the minecart makes it go much faster on iron rails. It's kind of weird because you have to press the backwards key to move forwards, but it works just fine otherwise. Piglins are primal, tribal creatures and do everything together as a group. Most people know they hunt down hoglins together, but you probably didn't know that there's a small chance that they'll dance together after taking one out. Setting the survival mode to peaceful difficulty will not save you! The fact is, there's one mob that can still attack you in peaceful mode, and that's the llama and its angry spit attack. So don't get on their bad side. You can fly with a rocket and elytra, but the fact is, the best way to fly is to shoot yourself with a slow fall arrow. If you do that, then launch off with a riptide trident, you'll reach the top of the well before the slow fall runs out. Then at this insane height, launch your elytra and fly for miles! What do you think the best item for fighting mobs is? Axes maybe? Some people prefer swords or bows, but you're all wrong! Boats are actually extremely powerful, as you can just chuck one down and completely immobilize any mob you want. They even stop Enderman from teleporting. You can name a chest in an anvil and the name will actually show up in the GUI. It even keeps its name when you break it, unlike any other block in the game. Maybe foxes can't swim, or at least they can for a little bit, but the fact is they're so small that they can't keep their head above water to breathe. Did you know you can create your own skulk biome with a secret technique? The skulk block reacts and spreads when mobs die nearby, so you could make a mob spawner lead onto a skulk catalyst. With every death, the skulk biome will spread with no limit! One fun fact is that you used to be able to feed parrots cookies to tame them. This got changed and now the cookies will kill the parrots. The reason for this deadly change is that feeding cookies to a parrot in real life is very dangerous, and they didn't want people killing off their real pet birds by accident. It's a fact that golems are the villagers loyal protector, but it's actually possible to witness a golem go on a rampage. Villagers celebrate by launching fireworks, but if they're not safe and a golem gets hit by a firework, it will see the villagers as enemies and wipe them all out. Did you know that if you enchant a trident with loyalty, it will follow you around until it gets into your inventory? Well, what happens when your inventory is full? It actually follows you around like a pet bird. But what if I told you this myth says cats are even more powerful? Sure, they only have literally 2% of the warden's health, but they have a special secret. No matter how far you drop them from, they won't take any damage. Apparently, this is because in real life, cats can literally fall from 200 feet up and survive. You're so much better than a dog. Hey! I didn't kill it. I'm still keeping my promise. But what about us? For some reason, landing in just an inch of water is enough to completely survive any fall. So, I mean, a watermelon is mostly water. Surely that can save me, right? Yeah, no. But berry bushes can. Right. 1.20 finally added armor customization with armor trims. But did they add the ability for our horses to get dripped with us? All right, it doesn't work with diamond. What about leather? Oh, I guess not. Looks like it does work for turtle shells, though, for extra swag for us. Sorry, horsey. Oh, and by the way, if you have a looting 255 sword and kill a screaming goat, you'll actually get a secret goat horn that plays a super special sound. 